Hi, I'm Joel, and today we're talking all things Uganda with our favorite Ugandan, Lydia from Unkaringo Safaris. Thank you. Lydia, welcome to the our rainforest. <laughs> Good to see a bit of forests. <laughs> You've been in England too long. <laughs> yeah, been and Scotland. Time. Yeah, but there, there was a bit of forest. We 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 really went through some good green so yeah good so we're going to answer some questions okay. on uganda just things we get not asked normally things people might want to know all right and the hot question right now let's call it the elephant in the room um we all got through covid now there seems to be a little bit of ebola in uganda yeah how's it how's it going there i'll say it's not as bad as media may put it out and uh, the cases have not increased beyond 50 cases within the country and the real and most of them have been contacts we've seen many people getting released from hospitals because they're healed of the bola and yesterday we had the biggest marathon in the country the mtn marathon which wouldn't have happened if ebola was indeed a threat within the city yeah. so it has not really extended out as the media has put it and Ebola, Uganda has experience with handling Ebola. We have seen this before. We've yeah. always been the ones who support Congo with Ebola cases. In 2014, we were very good with supporting West Africa. And unlike so many other times, Ebola always starts in Congo. So even us, we're like, okay, <laughs> what is this strain of Ebola in the middle of Uganda? Yeah, so, is, so we're right in, right in the right middle in of the, the country. Middle. We'll say yes, Movende district is about, uh, so if you're heading to Fort Porto, that will be three districts of four before you get to Fort Porto town. Yeah. Then from in, from Kampala, it's about two or three districts. So just in there. The tourist route is mainly what, south and west, so you don't pass through? Yeah, the main tourist route will not take you through Movende, but if you're coming out of Fort Porto and just going back to Entebbe, you could choose to go through Movende, but there's alternative routes yeah. that brings you back to uh, via uh, Lake Imboro route, so you don't really need to pass through Movende. So you know what a tourist can be close to Ebola, because it depends on how you planned your trip. So for us right now, most of our clients are not choosing that route. So in case of uh, Chivale back to Entebbe, they're yeah. coming via Kamwenge route, which avoids the, Mob the Mobende routing. Yeah. And for, for you living there, you, your staff, your people on the ground? <laughs> we, are, we have not seen anyone with Ebola. We have not witnessed it. Everything yeah. is normal. Markets are open. Everything is normal. We, we, everything is okay in the country. Brilliant. Yeah, if it, if it was a problem and it was really a big threat, wouldn't have had a big congregation yesterday. Yeah, and uh, recently cases in the last no, week or so? No, there have not been any cases. And uh, the last last uh, speech by the president, most of the, even uh, two of the districts that had been circled off around Movende, yeah. two are now open again. So once again, Uganda on top of Ebola, like in the past. Uh, we're waiting for proper... Uh, reports from World Health Organization. We had that uh, a new vaccine was coming in. So we're just waiting for who to just say this is the vaccine. So and there's no reason currently for a tourist to not go to Uganda because... No, no, no. And uh, at the moment we have clients around. Yeah. And also with all the SOPs we did during the COVID two years, Everyone knows to, <laughs> to clean sanitize, touch points, clean, yeah. yeah, touch, avoid touch. Ebola is not an airborne disease, unlike COVID. So for you to really get Ebola, you must have interacted with a person with Ebola. But even you guys in Uganda, you didn't get hit by COVID too much. Lucky us. Lucky you. Yeah, but we had a, a bit of death, yeah. but not as was, not yeah. But you had, a lot, you had lockdowns? Yeah, we did have lockdowns. And uh, you got locked down in, in your lodge, I believe, in Nkaringo? Uh I wasn't locked down in the lodge, but when the lockdown came and they would allow vehicles to move, we all moved to the lodge to help with the construction. Uh, what we what were, construction? What did you do? We had started on the, on the dining, the main lounge, and uh, 
we went there we finished that we also added three forest suits actually a fourth one is coming there'll be four forest suits in total so that's your so highest we, level of room highest now. level of room we did renovations uh, revamped a bit of the deluxe rooms and did more gardening and tree planting and made a forest out of the lodge so it's all looking good and a new dining room open and lounge and lounge is all, all open. open with yeah. beautiful views beautiful views over, over the Virungas one side true over windy on the other side yeah it's a place to be it's the place to be and Karinga always has been the place to be i think the yeah. views there it's, it's, better yeah, than it's anywhere 360 else degree and uh what else sort of changed uh, logistically we've seen in some countries problems with roads deteriorating, so getting around being harder. Um, I know in Madagascar, we had some problems with airlines, there being less aeroplanes and things. Uganda, has it suffered the same thing or? We've not had a bit of, uh, we've not had any interference with airlines into Uganda. So all the airlines that were flying to Uganda are still flying. No, but I'm more more, domest more domestic domestically, yeah. Um, the road between Fort Porto to Matson that was being worked on in 2019. So by yep. end of COVID time, that road is now open and uh, that has shortened the drive. So that used to take, what, eight hours oh, when eight I did it last nine time? nine hours, yeah. yes. And, and that's now? why people opted mostly to fly yeah. than to drive to Matson. But now you can drive. In you can drive in six, hours? six, seven hours. Wow. Yeah. So that has improved on that. But also the domestic flights have also in, improved with a yeah. new airline, uh, Bar Aviation, joining Aerolink. So that also has created a bit of more flights on the market, which also helps with availability. And also the routings that were taking four people now to two. So that was so mainly like Murchison. Murchison was always that. Murchison Entebbe, Murchison Chikasese was always four. But now you can so do no, two. It's, so it's really easy to get up to Murchison. To, yeah. And you can go Murchison to Kasesi. You can go Kasesi to, to Murchison. Yeah. Kasesi to Kisoro. Kisoro Kasesi. So no, it's... That's it's done a world of good then. Yeah. Loads of connections. So getting true, around true, true. is like super easy. Super easy. The requirements to enter Uganda are still the same. It's the... Your... Uh, COVID passport. Passport. Your COVID vaccine. Certificates, uh, yeah, and the yellow fever card, and also you must have booked your visa online. That's it. And then I see sometimes when you book your visa, it says you need an invitation letter, it says you need yeah. a copy of your itinerary, you need, yeah, you receive all that information, but they don't really ask for that on arrival. But still, if you're coming to Uganda on a safari, you have all this, you have your itinerary with you. In Kringo Safari can support all clients with an invitation letter if it's needed. The address of the company is all you need to have to fill in where you're going to stay or yeah. your, your past hotel on arrival. Yeah. So your must-haves are your passport, your yellow fever vac uh, your yellow fever vaccination certificate, yep. proof of COVID vaccine, yep. and your visa. Yes, and also if you don't have a vaccine, you can still enter, but you must present a 72-hour COVID PCR. PCR test. Yep. It's good. So yep. Everything is as normal. Everything is as normal. And then any, uh, any news from the Nkringo side? Any developments for the future? No, we have uh, invested more into our vehicles, our fleet. We have now more newer cars. We have because uh, we also because with with COVID and two, and cars sitting for a long time for two yeah. years, it meant also we needed to improve on those and have proper mechanics. We bought some new vehicles. Um, we trained our guides. We've also used that time not only in construction but also to train our guides and also both the office team and our field team. Is we've had a bit of workshops, training in house. And Kringo also still hopes to grow its wings to Chivale, have another property there, which is a work in progress that shall be revealed when it's ready. Top secret. Top secret. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so for more top secret information, if you like this and you want top secret information on Madagascar, on Ethiopia, on our little corner of Tanzania, at Beo Beo, subscribe to this video. Uh, you'll get little nuggets of information coming through. Uh, if you've got any questions, 
pop them down in the comments below and we'll get back to you and Lydia thank you for having me and thank you for and coming showing over. me your country and thanks for taking a little bit of <laughs> Scotland home. Of Scotland back home yeah that was lovely Lydia the Bruce <laughs> <laughs>